Okay, so uh, this is a weird one, right? Like you start looking into a prominent figure, someone who's written books, preached sermons, led a huge church. You mean Dr. Stephen Lawson? Yeah, Lawson. And it's like he just vanished. Websites scrubbed, speaking gigs gone, poof. Yeah, it's really something how quickly someone with that kind of online footprint can practically disappear. Seriously. Yeah. And I mean, this isn't just some random internet personality. This is Dr. Stephen Lawson, lead pastor of Trinity Bible Church in Dallas, big name in Reformed theology. A lot of people know this guy, or at least they knew his work. Right. So what happened? Well, that's where things get interesting. From the sources you sent, it seems like the catalyst for this whole thing, this whole uh, vanishing act, was an inappropriate relationship inappropriate relationship. It's fascinating how often that phrase pops up, right? Almost like you're trying to draw a line without, you know, actually saying where the line is. Totally. Like everyone's tiptoeing around something. Yeah. And Trinity Bible Church's statement, the one on churchleaders.com, even those reporting on the, uh, the father's threat to expose things, they all use this vague language. Okay. So let's, uh, let's break this down. What do we actually know about this inappropriate relationship? From what I've gathered, it allegedly went on for five years, and the woman involved was significantly younger than Lawson. But here's the thing. Nowhere do they use terms like infidelity or adultery. Instead, they land on adulterous in spirit. Adulterous in spirit. Okay, now unpack that for me. What does that even mean, especially when we're talking about a pastor, someone in his position? Well, on the surface, it seems to suggest that while Lawson may not have been physically unfaithful, his actions violated something deeper. You know, that trust and moral authority we associate with a pastor. It's like there's this unspoken code, right? A set of expectations that goes beyond the literal rules, especially for those in positions of authority. Exactly. And it makes you wonder, is this a case of Lawson being held to a different standard because he's a pastor? Or is this situation pointing to a bigger conversation about power, accountability, and how we even define transgression. It's like everyone's feeling their way through this minefield of unspoken rules. <laughs> yeah. One thing's for sure, though, the consequences for Lawson were swift. I mean, we're talking lightning fast. Right. Like as soon as this inappropriate relationship came to light, boom, Trinity Bible Church removes him from everything mm -hmm. indefinitely. And it doesn't stop there, right? One Passion Ministries, which he founded, they announce his resignation and wipe him from their website like he never existed. Come on. And then you have conferences like Men of the Word. Huh. They also pulled him from their lineup almost overnight. Wow. Okay, so those are some pretty significant consequences. But here's something else that jumped out at me from your notes. Grace Community Church, John MacArthur's Church, and the Master's Seminary, they both had strong ties to Lawson, right? Yeah, strong ties. And what's super interesting is that they've also scrubbed him from their websites. All gone. And yeah. they did it without a single official statement. It's deafening, isn't it, this silence? Especially considering Lawson's history with both places. You're telling me, this is John MacArthur we're talking about, mm -hmm. a titan in the reformed world. His support, or lack thereof, carries some serious weight. So to see him supporting Trinity Bible Church in these churchleader.com articles, but not actually addressing Lawson. It's, well, it's conspicuous, to say the least. Absolutely. It's like everyone's tiptoeing around the issue using really careful language. Mm -hmm. And those who aren't saying anything, well, they're saying a lot by staying silent. I mean, it makes you wonder what's going on behind the scenes. Or Especially in the reformed world, theology, affiliations, it's all connected. Yeah. So when someone like MacArthur makes a move. People notice. Exactly. And oh. supporting the church, but not like explicitly Lawson, yeah. could be his way of saying, hey, this is serious. Yeah. Without alienating Lawson's supporters. Hmm. Smart. It's like he's trying to walk this tightrope between, you know, keeping his own influence, A&D, upholding accountability. It's a tough spot to be in. No kidding. But, you know, this whole thing, it really makes you think about those gray areas, right? The spaces where it's not so clear cut. Yeah. Was this just Lawson messing up? Or is this something bigger, you know, something systemic within these institutions? Billion dollar question right there. Yeah. And it's interesting because Austin Duncan, the guy who spoke at Men of the Word, he might actually offer a clue 
Remember that clip you sent from his address? Yeah, the one where he says Lawson permanently disqualified himself from pastoral ministry. That one. <laughs> Talk about loaded language. Disqualified. It's like he failed some kind of moral test, you know? Exactly. It's not just a mistake. It's a fundamental breach mm. of what's required to be a pastor, mm. especially in reform circles mm. where character, conduct, it's everything. And yet still so careful with their words. Right. It makes you wonder if there's a fear of being too direct, of like stirring things up within the community. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You can't underestimate the power dynamics at play here. We're talking about institutions navigating a very public situation and the stakes are high. Totally. How they respond, the words they use, it all sends a message, not just about Lawson, but about what they value, what they prioritize. So where does that leave us then? If we move past the specifics of Lawson, what are the big questions this raises about leadership, accountability, even forgiveness? Big ones. It forces us to really look at that tension between grace and accountability. Mm -hmm. How do we hold people responsible for what they've done, especially when it's caused harm, but still leave space for repentance, for restoration? It's tough, man. It is tough. And even bigger picture, how do we create cultures in churches, in communities, where these conversations can even happen? openly, uh -huh. honestly, without people freaking out or getting condemned. Because let's be real, this isn't some issue that's confined to religion. Yeah. Politics, entertainment, business. It feels like every time you turn around, there's another story, another scandal about someone in power failing to meet expectations. And often the most telling part isn't the actual transgression, but how these institutions respond to it. Yeah. Are they all about transparency, holding people accountable, even when it's messy? Or are they more concerned with, you know, saving face, keeping right. things under wraps? Which brings us back to Grace Community Church and the Master Seminary and that deafening silence. I mean, it's hard not to see that as a way of protecting themselves, avoiding tough conversations that might make them look bad. Yeah, and that silence sends a dangerous message. Yeah. Like, accountability is optional. Like, some transgressions are okay to overlook, especially if you're powerful. It's like they're saying, this isn't our problem. But like, come on, the situation shines a light on a crack in their foundation. You can't just ignore that. Absolutely. Yeah. And it makes you wonder if they're willing to brush this under the rug, what else are they willing to ignore? Where's the line and who decides? Those are some tough questions, man. Yeah, but necessary ones. Yeah. And not just about this situation, about any institution that has power, influence. We need to be asking these questions. So big picture, what's the one thing you hope people take away from all of this? Don't be afraid to ask the hard questions. Challenge these institutions, even the ones you're a part of, to practice what they preach, demand transparency, accountability. Yeah, and not just from those in charge, from ourselves too. 100%. Because sure, silence might protect reputations in the short term, but real change, yeah, lasting change, that only comes from honest conversation, even when it's hard. So true. It's a good thing to remember, right? Yeah. This whole deep dive, it wasn't about finding easy answers. It was about asking the right questions. Exactly. And hopefully sparking some important conversations along the way. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, that about wraps up this deep dive. Until next time, folks, keep seeking truth.